This video has been sponsored by NVIDIA Studio and PC Specialist. Link in the description. I love music videos. I love them so much. In my opinion, they're some of the most expressive artistic videos on YouTube at the moment. Now, I see some of you who put those little moments of music montage in your videos. And let me tell you right now, this shit is what separates the gods from the peasants. So if you're sitting there thinking, but Finn, I want to make gaming videos, not music videos. But well, then shut the hell up. You're missing my point. We're using these music video editing techniques to enhance specific points in any of your videos, gaming videos, anything. So let's have a look together. Thank you to PC Specialist and NVIDIA Studio for sponsoring this five part editing series and making all of these videos possible. Make sure that you hang around till later to hear about why I love them and why you absolutely should too. So first off, we need to get something straight. You can't just go around using any old song you like on YouTube. There's this thing called copyright and this thing really sucks because realistically, I know that most of you are only using these songs as backing tracks, not as some sort of key to money or anything like that. But the way that YouTube deals with copyrighted music and copyright claims generally is to say, hey, we're gonna take all of this revenue on your 10 minute video because you used 10 seconds of copyrighted music in that video, in the background mumbled up by other words, but still we're gonna take all your money and give it to the publishers. Cool, right? That's the way the world works. So to stop this from happening, you have a few options. One of which is that you look in the descriptions of these videos that have the songs that you like in them, and then you see if there are any generated boxes like this. Basically means no, so don't touch it. Another way to do this is to upload your video as unlisted. YouTube has this new feature now that checks for copyright infringements before being published, but still don't rely on that because 1% of the time it doesn't quite pick up the copyrighted stuff until after you've published it. So the best thing to do really is to go onto a site like Epidemic Sounds and sign up there. Yes, you're gonna have to pay for it, but hey, the issue is no more. Or even use my essential music playlist that I've linked below. All the music there is pretty, uh, Pretty poggers. Is that... Is that still cool? Oh. So finally, we can bring our music into Premiere Pro. Drag that music folder right into the project window and pick whichever song you were using. Then slap that dude into the timeline. A technique that is used so much in TV, film, and YouTube videos is cutting to the beat. I mean, I literally base my whole outro on this concept. But really, when this is happening in the videos themselves, it's a real subconscious kind of effect that all really adds into the sense of flow in the video. And no one's gonna notice you're doing it, which is a good thing. So let's say that you already have your gameplay cut up into chunks that you're really happy with. So what you wanna do is head into this option menu, and then you wanna make sure that this is checked Essentially what this is gonna do is that when you're scrubbing through your video frame by frame, you're gonna hear a bit of an audio preview from that frame that you're on. And that is gonna be really useful when you're looking for that beat to cut through. Yeah, now you can find that beat. Yeah, you can search that shit out real easy now. Nowhere to hide. Hey you, come here. Don't think that I can't see you. All you have to do is edit your video so that it cuts on the beat. And then suddenly your video's flow just went from a two out of 10 to a three out of 10. <laughs> Now, try not to be cutting on weird beats that don't make that much sense to cut to. I mean, any beat is better than none, but when you're actively making these decisions, it's way better to go in with intention. Here's a clip from my latest gaming video. Um, it did exactly what I'm talking about now. Check it out. Next up, we've got this little drop down menu. Pretty harmless, right? Wrong. These blending styles might just be the most underutilized thing in editing existence. Let's have a closer look. So what I'm doing here is duplicating my clip above the original and applying a lighten effect in the blend mode on the top clip. And now I'm pulling the scale up. To fix some general issues with this effect, I create a circular mask, invert it, pull up the mask expansion a bit, add a bit more feathering, and then that's it. I'm gonna duplicate that clip that I just edited and then repeat that same process. As you can see, we've got this pretty cool trippy look. And of course, it's up to your own imagination. You can enhance the colors of these things by just slapping on a color preset or anything like that. And now suddenly, you're a grungy pop star. Well done. It's finally here. It's time to speed ramp. Pull that track height way up to the max. Now that we've got some space, you're gonna right click and hit this option down here. Then find speed and hit that. And now you'll see a whole new world of stuff to edit. No, stop it! If you press P for PP, 
And <laughs> if you press P for poo, then you'll have a pen in your hand. No, wait. If you press P, then you'll have the pen tool selected. So then in that space, you're gonna click where you want it to start slowing down or speeding up. As you can see, we've got two sides here. Then press V and drag up or down to select how fast either one is going. So play it through and you'll see the effect looking pretty choppy. To make them look nicer, you can drag out these keyframes made and then move these beziers like so to make that smoothie. People do all kinds of stuff with this effect. It's pretty sweet. You can get it to spike in speed just by adding another keyframe next to the ones we made before and then making the shape look something like this, which makes this effect. Now, I bet you you've seen that a million times in Fortnite montages. That's the kind of shit I'm talking about. So a good way to finish that effect off is to put a flash right on that peak. Do this by creating a new color map. Set it to white, and then drag it to the timeline, shorten it down to about five frames, and then keyframe the opacity so it's zero, then a hundred, and then zero. Make sure that that central keyframe is right in the middle, right in that peak. And if you've still got music on the timeline, maybe try and sync it up so that that's on a beat. You could even create that same multi-layer effect that we created earlier after that flash. So let's have a look at what we've created today. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. That's a cool <laughs> Bam! Oh my god, we've got an MLG Pro Gamer montage on our hands. Welcome to Phase Kid. We knew you could make it. Come on in the Phase House. If you're struggling with those frames, editing multiple layers like we have done today, then absolutely you can call yourself a true editor. Knowing the pain of choppy playback now is only gonna make it sweeter when it's gone. Trust me. That is why PC Specialist and NVIDIA Studio have partnered together to give us creators the best hardware possible to give us a comfortable experience editing. NVIDIA Studio has creative partnerships with more than just Adobe. In fact, if you own or use DaVinci Resolve, Blender or Maya, for example, then you are in huge luck because the people over at NVIDIA have created massive improvements across the board for all of these creative softwares and more. In DaVinci Resolve, the list is seemingly endless. Some of these incredible accelerated features include speed warping, face refinement, object removal, magic mask, and crazy encoding and decoding performance. That means editing 8K footage smoothly. Like what? What? The power of RTX is truly incredible. Trust me. Having used an RTX Studio certified desktop for a couple of months now myself, my editing life has genuinely changed because every video I edit now is in 4K, playing at full resolution, smoothly. This isn't a miracle though. This is my RTX card doing its thing, taking the weight without breaking a sweat. So if you're ready to make that investment into an NVIDIA Studio certified system, then head on down to the link in my description where you can visit PC Specialist and create your own customized NVIDIA Studio system. Enjoy! Huh, I'm actually quite happy with how that turned out. Yeah, it looks yeah, pretty like sweet. That. That, that looked pretty good. I quite like the layering effect. <sighs> So what's next? Uh, rotoscoping. Yeah. Anyways, uh, thank you everyone for joining this week. Make sure that you tune in next time when we're gonna learn about rotoscoping. You can do that in Premiere? After Effects. Why not Premiere? You can only do it in After Effects. Yeah, but, but Premiere. Sh just shut up, just trust me, please. Jesus. Bye everyone, see you next week. Bye.